Why you must read? Intermediate level. Why do I need to read in English? I get this question a lot from students. They argue that as long as they're going to classes, doing their homework and watching films in English, there's no need to sit down with something as boring and old-fashioned as a book. Well, to put it simply, they're wrong. In fact, reading is the best thing you can do to learn English, and I'm here to tell you why. Firstly, reading skills are more important than ever, whether that be in English or your native language. In 2006, only one in 100 people went to university. Now, it's seven in 100. All jobs, from office workers to mechanics, require far more reading and writing than a century ago. The competition is higher and readers win. Secondly, reading is the best way to improve proficiency in English overall. Yes, you heard me right. Reading will improve your speaking, writing, vocabulary, and grammar far more efficiently than any other method. It won't improve your listening skills, but it will give you the vocabulary necessary to train your ear quickly. But it's not just any reading we're talking about. In school, you probably read lots in English. Boring textbooks and stories with exercises at the end.no. We're not talking about that. We're talking about reading for pleasure. That means reading a book because you enjoy it. Not because your teacher told you to. Not because it's what you're supposed to read to improve your English. No questions. No book reports. Just pure pleasure. Yeah, right? You're probably thinking, that's too good to be true. Let me show you. In 1965, an experiment was carried out in juvenile delinquent reform centers in America. One group of the students were given free books. They made sure they were exciting books that would appeal to young boys, such as James Bond. But unlike most reading programs, they were not required to read the books. They were simply given them. They could throw the books away, give them back, or draw on the pages, and nobody would punish them for it. But the boys did read them. They read a lot of them. Some of them read a book every two days. At the end of two years, they tested the students. Not only did their reading and writing greatly improve, so did their attitude towards school. But the students who were not on this program stayed the same. In fact, some of them got worse over the two years. This isn't just for native speakers, either. A study of English as a second language, ESL, students in the Fiji Islands looked at three methods. Traditional English teaching, sustained silent reading, which means reading in silence for a long time and a more conventional reading program, where the teachers read aloud to the students by the end of the first year. Students taught with the two reading methods had a 15-month advantage in English ability, compared to the 6.5 months of the traditional method. When the study was replicated in Singapore, the students who did only sustain silent reading did better on grammar tests than the students who had taken only grammar classes. When we do grammar exercises, we try to memorize the rules of the language. When we read, we absorb them. But I know what you're thinking. That's all well and good. But when I pick up a book in English, it's too hard for me. I get bored of looking up words, and I give up after a few minutes. That's why I wrote this book. It is designed to make you fall in love with reading by providing fun, familiar stories that are easy to understand. The stories gradually increase in difficulty and length so that you can feel a sense of progression and success at the end. Most of them were originally released on my podcast, Easy Stories in English, 
but they have been rewritten and improved for this book, as well as having a version for each language level. They are a mix of classic and less popular fairy tales, as well as one that I wrote myself. Again, I know what you're thinking. Fairy tales? But those are for kids. I need useful vocabulary about business and science and technology. There's no way to make that fun. The thing with language is, there isn't such a big difference between important language and fun language. We use a wide range of words when talking about technical topics as well as chatting with our friends. A study by McQuillan examined vocabulary in 22 novels and found that they included 85% of words on academic word lists. Rolls and Rogers found that if a student read a million words of science fiction, they would acquire many of the technical words required for a science degree. So, yes, reading fairy tales will help your English in all areas, even for academic purposes. As an English teacher, I've seen many times that the students who do the best are those who read the most. For ILTS, for university, for business, or just for travel, reading is the factor that predicts success. But I understand if you're still unsure. When I learned about all this, I was too. But I like to experiment, and I have a passion for learning languages. So in 2017, I decided to test this theory. I had wanted to learn Spanish for a long time, but aside from struggling with Duolingo and not really learning anything, I hadn't made a serious attempt. I set myself a goal. I would read a million words in Spanish and see what my level was afterwards. A million words is roughly 20 standard length novels, so it was a huge task. I started with very easy resources, like transcripts of podcasts for learners, but I avoided anything that felt too much like work. Once I'd learned the basics, I started reading translations of books that I knew in English, such as Harry Potter and A Song of Ice and Fire. You might know it as Game of Thrones. Finally, I was ready to move on to completely new books. And I fell in love with Latin American authors such as Isabel Allende, Luis Jorge Borges, and Manuel Puig. With the reading, I also listened to podcasts, but I always read the transcripts and counted the words as part of my reading. After I achieved my goal, I tested myself by writing and talking to native speakers and found I was at a decent intermediate level. I could understand almost everything I read, understand clear speech, and have conversations at a comfortable level, even though I had barely spoken the language since I started learning. I had been learning for about a year, and I had made more progress than most students make in five years. I didn't memorize the vocabulary and grammar rules. I absorbed them. By this point, you're either thinking, this is all complete nonsense. Or you're super excited, ready to start reading for hours a day. But the next thing I'm going to say is extremely important. You must read books that are easy. You must read books that are fun. If a book is too difficult or too boring, put it down and find another one. Stephen Krashen, an expert in the field of second language acquisition, says, read only material in the second language that is genuinely fun and interesting, material that is so easy that you probably feel guilty reading it in your primary language. This is your excuse to read comics, magazines, detective stories, romances, etc. There is no shame in reading translations. Ideally, you want to be reading a book so easy that, when you see a word you don't know, you can understand the meaning from context. Research has shown that in order for this to happen, the text needs to be at least 98% known words. 98%?
That's so high. I know, dear reader, but let me show you an example. Here's a text where I've replaced 10% of the words with nonsense words. That is, it's 90% comprehensible. Jerry flurged out of bed and threw open the curtains. It was a beautiful day. He bimped to himself as he did his daily routine, pouring coffee and buttering poffer. But then his phone rang, and the person torngling was so unexpected that he dropped his vinky on the floor. I asked that easy to understand? Could you read a whole book of that? Here's the same text, but 98% comprehensible. Jerry jumped out of bed and threw open the curtains. It was a beautiful day. He sang to himself as he did his daily routine, pouring coffee and buttering toast. But then his phone rang, and the person calling was so unexpected that he dropped his vinky on the floor. How was that? Even if you couldn't understand everything, I bet it was far more enjoyable to read than the first text. And that's the magic of reading for pleasure. Even if you didn't understand everything, you got enough to follow the story and keep going without having to pick up a dictionary. So if you find that this book is too hard, put it down and read the level below. If you find it boring, go read something else. Yes. I'm giving you permission to stop reading my book. I know not everyone likes my writing style, and that's okay. Find what works for you. As you read, focus on the meaning of the stories, and don't sweat it if you don't understand every single word. Just relax and try to get lost in the pages. Believe it or not, when we have fun, we learn far better. The levels of these volumes are based on the common European framework of reference, a system for defining language levels. You'll know them as A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. Although these books only cover A2, C1. If you're A1 level, you probably need more guided teaching before you start reading, and if you're C2 level, then you can start reading books for native speakers. A great strategy, if you don't feel so confident about your reading ability, is to start with the beginner level of the book and reread it level by level, going all the way up to advanced. This will allow you to really absorb the new language and gradually increase the difficulty. There is not a huge difference between the intermediate level stories and the advanced level stories, but even rereading the same story twice can be very effective. We need to repeatedly encounter new words and phrases before our brain can really understand them. Finally, this book has no exercises in it. I considered adding them after each story but it would contradict everything I just told you. The most effective way to spend your time is reading for pleasure, and exercises distract from that. If, however, you finish this book and find yourself wanting more stories, do go and listen to my podcast. Happy reading and happy learning. Ariel Goodbody